Hello and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, we're going to be doing a hill climb test with the Punk Rider Pro out here at South Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, the beautiful thing about today is it is a silent Sunday, so this road is closed to automobile traffic, so we don't have to worry about, you know, cars slowing us down or piling up behind us. Now, I recently did a range test on this scooter and got some pretty impressive results, so if you haven't checked out that range test video, definitely do so. But uh, we are going to be riding up this mountain in mode three, sport mode, which is the quickest mode for this scooter, because we should have plenty of battery to get us from the bottom up the nine and a half miles and back down again. Of course, we'll uh, be putting that to the test. It's about 93 degrees right now on this glorious Sunday morning. And uh, we're going to try and get in and out of here as quickly as possible before it heats up. Good news is we've got some overcast conditions. So we don't have to worry about that uh, intense sun just yet. Now, if there is some whistling sound in the video, I do apologize in advance. I'm using a different helmet. Aerodynamics are a little bit different than uh, how they impact the microphone. So now we will be tracking this ride with Garmin GPS today. That'll give us kind of the most accurate way to track all the stats for this ride. Now, generally speaking, this is going to be about a 18 to 1900 foot elevation gain. Uh, you know, with some inclines, you know, upwards of 10% and some sections a little bit more. And so it's an absolute endurance test of this scooter up the mountain. And right now we're just cruising around, having a great time. Now the Punk Rider Pro does come with dual 600 nominal watt motors that combined are capable of cranking out upwards of 2,300 watts of peak power. So I don't suspect uh, we're going to have any issue getting up this hill today. Now the one thing that we want to watch out for on rides like this is going to be the potential for overheating. You know, this is definitely a stress test for any scooter that we bring up here. And you know, I've brought multiple scooters, e-bikes, the whole nine yards, and they all perform very differently. Now this Punk Rider Pro does come with a 52 volt, 18 amp hour battery. Uh, which is, you know, pretty decent for a scooter of this size. It does weigh in at, you know, approximately 68 pounds. And so with the setup on this scooter, you definitely get quite a bit of power for the package. So, uh, so far I've been really impressed uh, with the scooter on the rides. The one thing that I think uh, needs further adjustment is gonna be the brakes. The scooter does come with dual drum brakes as well as electronic regenerative brakes in both motors. Uh, and so, uh, what I found is that, you know, these drum brakes have needed some adjustment, you know, so that they bite earlier on when you depress those uh, brake handles. And, you know, generally speaking, drum brakes, they don't have the stopping power of disc brakes. Uh, but the good news here is we also have that regenerative brake, uh, you know, in both the front and rear motor. It does help bring us uh, to a stop. All right, so we are at approximately four miles now and we have lost one bar. So we're at four out of five battery bars, four miles into the ride. Now it is nine and a half miles approximately to the top of South Mountain. And we're gonna be going to all three lookout points. At least that's the goal today. We've got uh, Dobbins Lookout, Buena Vista Lookout, as well as the newly opened Aguila Valley Lookout. So excited to see if we can make it to all three today. So far, we are cruising. Uh, you know, this no issue at all whatsoever making it up the mountain right now. Plenty of power in reserve, and I don't have the throttle all the way down. So there's, there's plenty of power sitting there waiting if we need it, which I think we absolutely will uh, once we get uh, closer to that, uh, you know, Gila Valley lookouts when we have our steepest sections. Now, this scooter does come equipped with a full suspension. Although it's not a traditional coil spring or coil spring and hydraulic suspension, uh, it actually uses rubber cartridges in the front and the rear, which surprisingly has a good amount of travel for what it is. You know, when I first got this scooter, I didn't have very high hopes for the rubber cartridges, especially of a, with a scooter of this size and weight. Uh, but turns out it's actually a pretty comfortable ride. So, you know, of course, we'll see how those uh, rubber cartridges hold up to the wear and tear. 
But one thing that I do want to call out about Punk Electric um, that I think is really important is they are a newer brand uh, to the market. Yet when you go to their website and uh, you go to the parts section, you can buy pretty much every single component for this scooter right off of their website. And I can tell you right now, that is relatively rare for newer brands. You know, a lot of times, you know, the you, new scooter gets released and you have a very limited parts availability. Their website is fully stocked with every single, almost every single part for this scooter. So they've got pages and pages of components from, you know, the grip tape or the grip mat on the surface of the deck to, you know, the throttle to, you know, specific trim pieces, the whole nine yards. So I was very happy to see that uh, when I was researching this company. All right, so we're going to be hooking a left to our first lookout point. Which today is going to be Dobbin's lookout. Make sure it's clear. We are officially at our first lookout point. We'll take a quick pit stop here. Take in the views. Looks like it's a relatively clear day out today. All right, I'm gonna head on out because we got a lot of bees up here today. Definitely not interested in getting stung by a swarm of bees. So we are going to go head out to our next lookout point. Now this scooter does come equipped with regenerative braking. So there's a dedicated regenerative braking lever here on the left hand side. My only complaint about this lever is that it's a little far uh, inside the handlebar. So you kind of got to, you know, walk your thumb on over to that regen brake and then you can reposition your hand. So future iterations of this scooter, it would be nice to see that regen brake, at least have an extended lever here so that you have better access to it. But either way, um, it is another way to slow down this scooter. So if you don't want to use the drum brake, you just want to use electronic braking, you can just uh, hit this and that regen brake will kick in. Now, of course, the strength of the regenerative brakes uh, is adjustable within the app. So if you want it to be a little more intense or a little less intense, uh, you have the ability to do that. It looks like in the app, the default setting is like four and a half. Now, one thing I noticed about the rubber block suspension on this scooter is, you know, for your everyday lumps and bumps in the road, it's great. But if you go over particularly aggressive stuff, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna, not gonna be as comfortable as a full coil spring hydraulic suspension. All right, we're gonna head straight to our next lookout, which is Buena Vista Lookout. Little steep section here. Now, <laughs> this is funny. We're going up this mountain so fast that I'm missing my uh, mileage check in So we've just crossed the seven mile mark and we've still got four out of five bars remaining. And uh, yeah, we're making it up just fine. This has got to be one of my uh, quickest rides up this mountain. Now, normally this is what I use for most of my hill climb tests. What I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be incorporating a second hill climb test, which is going to be more along the lines of testing out the brute strength of these scooters. So we're going to go up the steepest uh, incline in the Phoenix metro area, which is over 23% uh, percent grade. I think it's 23.6% grade, uh, which is absolutely intense and a great test for these scooters. Now, I'm not going to be testing all my scooters on that uh, hill because most of them won't make it up. But, uh, you know, this one here, I have high hopes. <laughs> all right, there's our second lookout. I don't see any bees here. All right, there's the Phoenix downtown. You got Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, uh, you know, mountains, Camelback, the whole nine yards. Excellent views up here. All right, and we are off to our next lookout point. All right, still four out of five bars. And we are now heading on over 
to lookout point number three. One thing I'm probably gonna do when we get to the top is, uh, you know, dial in a little more electronic braking uh, for the ride down the mountain so that we get, uh, you know, ample braking power from both the drums as well as the electronic brakes. Now I mentioned this in my range test video, but these grips on this scooter are very, very comfortable. So on that range test, I went, you know, like two hours or so of riding and my hands felt fantastic. So these ergonomic locking grips are a huge plus on this scooter. All right, here's a little bit of a steeper section. And we're still able to cruise up it at uh, 20 miles an hour. And it gets a little bit steeper here in this windy section. up and another development we have lost another bar so we are now at three out of five bars at about 8.26 miles into the ride so we've got another mile or so till we make it to the top we've also got the steepest section ahead of us so here we go take advantage of uh, gravity here and our momentum Head on over to the top. All right, so there are the uh, communications towers up at the top of South Mountain. And, uh, you know, right up here, just a little ways up is where this used to, uh, and this was closed off while they were building up that uh, new lookout point. All right. This is going to be the steepest section here. Can we make it up? That is the question. Does this scooter have enough torque to get us to the top? We're still at 14 miles an hour. I recently took another scooter up here and uh, got some kind of a throttle error. That was exciting. Thank goodness that's all it was. Okay, yeah, it, this, this is the steepest section and it has no problem making it up right now. All right, last little leg and we are at the top. This is Gila Valley Lookout. And we are at the top. I'll go ahead and get this parked over here. Give you a view of what I see. So that was a Gila Valley Lookout. Now we are heading back down the mountain. So this part's going to be eight and a half miles or so all the way back down. I did hop into the app and I adjusted the brake strength for electronic braking to six out of ten from the default of four and a half. So that should uh, give us, yep, I can definitely feel it. That'll give us a little more braking power on the way down.
right coming over this ridge and another downhill section One thing to note, uh, when we got to the top there, I did check the battery percentage and it was at 56%. All right. Another downhill section for a little bit here. Lean into these turns. One thing we definitely want to keep an eye out for is any new potholes or gravel on the ground because we did get some pretty heavy rains a couple days ago in the evening hours, so hopefully there's not too much uh, debris in the road from that. But generally speaking, the roads up here are in fantastic condition. Oh, sorry. Almost plowed into a chipmunk there. That was close. So we've crossed the 12 mile mark. We've been riding for approximately 41 minutes and we've still got three out of five bars remaining. And we are working our way back down South Mountain. So far the brakes are doing a good job on this scooter. So no issues there. But uh, what makes the braking situation a lot nicer is the fact that you've got that electronic braking as well. So I think both in tandem make for an overall pleasant braking experience. We're gonna come into another set of curves in the road here. Lean into this turn. Also wanna keep an eye out behind me, make sure I don't have any bicyclists screaming down the mountain. Coming into another tight one here. And right into another one. And another one. Overall handling is pretty good on this scooter, I'm not gonna lie. And coming into another turn. I am noticing a big difference with this new helmet. I got this Scorpion helmet. I don't recall the model. It's like a Scorpion R1 Air. I, 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 I don't know, I'm butchering it. But uh, definitely a lot more aerodynamic than my Sierra 2 helmet from O'Neill. But one thing I noticed is that, you know, just the aerodynamics of the helmet create some whistling sounds that I can pick up on the microphone, which I didn't with the Sierra 2. All right, the downhill section here. No one behind me. And one thing with these electric scooters, you know, when you're riding at higher rates of speed and you've got like bumpy terrain, you want to be very cognizant of the possibility of having speed wobbles. Uh, you know, so uh, just something to keep an eye out on. All right, so we've crossed the 15 mile mark. We've been riding now for about 48 minutes and we've still got three out of five bars remaining. So that regen brake is helping us out a little bit here. Now, if this is a scooter that you're interested in and, uh, you know, meets your criteria, checks all your boxes, I'll include some links as well as a coupon code for a discount in the description below. So if you use those links to purchase this scooter, it definitely helps fund future reviews on this channel, keeps the wheels moving. 
so thank you in advance. And Punk Electric did, you know, send me this scooter for review purposes. And so as with nearly all scooters that I receive, we take it through a gauntlet of tests to give you a comprehensive view of what you can expect with a scooter before buying it. Same thing with e-bikes, so I try and take them all through a, you know, similar series of tests. Put them to the extremes, which most people in everyday situations won't be riding in those extremes, so I'll give you a good idea of what the uh, upper limits are of that scooter or bike. All right, we've got some nice smooth road here. And of course the speed bumps. All right, folks, so that was our hill climb test with the Punk Rider Pro here at South Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona. We covered 17.01 miles on this ride, and we had an average moving speed of 21.4 miles an hour with a maximum attained speed of 31.1 miles an hour on the downside of the mountain. We did scale 1,877 feet in elevation gain on this ride. So very, very impressed with this scooter uh, throughout the entire ride up to the top. Uh, even in the most steep sections, this thing performed very well. Now, the one thing I do want to call out, and I'll throw a picture uh, on the screen here for you, uh, is that the fender assembly did get a little loose on the way down. You know, there's a lot of bumpy uh, parts of the ride there that I think kind of vibrated that loose a little bit. And so the four screws that attach that to the swing arms definitely need some thread locker so punk electric if you're listening definitely get some thread locker on those screws so i'm going to do that first thing uh, when i get home uh, other than that you know performed very very well um, the rubber block suspension for the most part handled everything we threw at it uh, the only time you run into you know its limitations is going to be when you're going over particularly rough stuff at a high rate of speed but other than that it is a very comfortable ride now i will be posting other testing videos in the coming weeks and after we rack up a few hundred miles on this scooter we will bring it all together in a full end-to-end -end comprehensive review let me know if you have any questions comments thoughts concerns in the comment section below happy to answer them and as always thank you so much for tuning into tom's gadget garage we'll see you next time